few years ago, I posted a video, Logic versus Pro Tools, and wow, you all had a lot of thoughts on it. Every expert and every self-proclaimed expert weighed in on it. Now, it's been five years since I posted that video, and I wanted to check back in so that I could add Ableton to the discussion and also, you know, just kind of see if anything's changed with the software in the last five years since I did that kind of comparison. I use all three of these DAWs, Pro Tools, Logic, and Ableton, on a regular basis, and I think you can make professional, great, amazing music in any of them, as well as FL Studio, Studio One, Cubase, whatever. But I only have professional experience with the three that I'm gonna cover today, so those are what I'm gonna stick to. And yes, even though every single one of these DAWs does virtually the same thing, they all were designed by developers that kind of prioritize slightly different things, which gives each of them a unique flavor, which means that some of them might fit our style and workflow better than others. Now, right now, if you're thinking, who cares about this guy's opinion? He's just another idiot on the internet giving his opinion. Fair enough, but I've recorded songs that were number one on radio. I've recorded drums on, you know, an album that was nominated for a Latin Grammy. And songs I've recorded drums on from this very studio have gone out and, you know, gotten millions of streams on multiple platforms all over the world. So while I am another random idiot on the internet, I have been recording from here in my studio and other Nashville-based studios for over a decade. Okay, so how am I going to score these DAWs and compare them? I mainly use DAWs for recording editing, and mixing audio. That means working with audio is the number one most important thing for me when I'm working in a recording program. But that might not be the case for you. You might not care as much about audio as I do. And because of that, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna have a bunch of different categories that I score each DAW in so that even if we end up with different scores, you can still see the rating I give whatever DAW in whatever category you care about the most. And the categories I'm gonna work off of today are Learning curve, how hard is it is to learn the software, price, recording audio, editing audio, virtual instruments, MIDI manipulation, stock plugins, overall workflow, mixing, and collaboration. I'll give each DAW a score for each of these categories, uh, and the score will be from one through three. One being, ah, this DAW is bad at this category, don't use it. Two being, ah, this DAW is okay at this category, and three bring this DAW is amazing for this category. So at the end of the day, we'll have a score that totals what I think is the best DAW, but you'll also be able to see how whatever DAW you're looking at scores in whatever category you care about. So let's get into it. All right, so the first category is learning curve. How hard is it to learn these softwares? For Logic, I gave the learning curve a three. I think Logic is definitely the most intuitive. Mac has definitely made it so that, you know, all of their software is like, you pull it up and it's like ready to go and you don't have to think about stuff. So I think Logic gets a three. It excels at being pretty easy to pick up. For me, Pro Tools scores a two in the learning category. It's not too hard once you're up and running, but I did find when I was learning Pro Tools that there were things like how you set up your interface, how you route audio and pick your inputs and outputs. It was a little more confusing. As well, there's just a couple other like nitty gritty details that I found were a little more confusing than Logic, which Logic was the first DAW I ever used. Um, so yeah. Pro Tools isn't too hard to learn, but it was a little bit more, you know, confusing to get a hold of than Logic. And for Ableton, I gave it a learning curve score of one because I think Ableton was super confusing to use. You got session view, you got arrangement view. They're tied together in certain ways, but they're not in other ways. Session view, you got all these little rectangles that you don't really know what to do with. I was just totally confused when I started opening up Ableton and tried to start building something because I just did not understand what was going on. As well, things like warp, a lot of times you drag something in and if you don't know it, it starts warping it automatically and then you're like, why does this sound different? I just thought Ableton was a little more confusing than any of the other DAWs when trying to get started. Now let's talk about price. I gave Logic a score of two in the category of price because I think uh, it's not, cheap. Ableton definitely is cheaper, which we'll get to. Logic isn't too expensive. When I bought it, it was $200. I'm not sure what it is now, but um, it's $200. You pay for it once and you have it forever and you can keep updating it forever. And I think that's a huge win. Pro Tools in the price category, I gave a score of one. Uh, and I would give it a zero if I could. Avid is still on a subscription base. They have lowered it in recent years. But um, I just, I don't like the subscription model, especially for a software that you have to use and update and maintain. And, you know, everybody has a love-hate relationship with Avid. I give it a score of one. Uh, 
I wish you could just buy the software outright and stop paying every month for it. In Ableton, I gave a score of three in the price category because it has the most flexibility. You can start with Ableton Intro for I think $99, great deal. It does have limited features, but if you're just, you know, I primarily use Ableton for backing tracks, which we'll get to, but uh, for Ableton, if you're just trying to get started, you're not doing crazy huge productions or you're running a simple backing track setup, Ableton's gonna work great and for 99 bucks, you have the software, you can keep it forever, amazing. Next category, recording audio. I gave Logic a score of two in the recording audio category because I think it's good at recording audio and I don't really have issues with it, but it's not you know, my preferred thing. I think when recording audio for me as a drummer, one of the most important things for me is being able to playlist, uh, you know, group different tracks together, playlist them so that I can comp really easily. And I think that, you know, Logic is very good at this, so it gets a score of two. In the category of recording audio, Pro Tools gets a score of three. I think, you know, for me personally, Pro Tools is the best at recording audio. I think it's the easiest to group stuff. I think it's the easiest to um, commit stuff when you have it. Like I just, I really like the workflow of recording audio with Pro Tools. Um, and it is what that program was designed. Again, in the intro, I kind of hinted at all of these programs do the same thing, but the developers of each program had a specific kind of priority list in mind when developing it. And Pro Tools, I think, was really just, it is the perfect program built to record audio. For recording audio, I gave Ableton a score of one. Um, I think that it, when you're recording, uh, having as low of latency as possible is important. Latency is always something you have to like mess around with with Ableton, which I find very frustrating. As well, Ableton is getting better at it. They are adding features that accommodate things like grouping multiple drums together so that you can record them and have them all set up. But to me, it definitely wasn't a program that was thinking of that first. So to me, if you just want to record your podcast, you just want to record your drum set with the 12 mics you're recording, um, Ableton to me is not yet the program that I would say is doing that the best. Next category, editing audio. For Logic, I gave it a score of two in the category of editing because I think it's good, not great. Logic, I, f I just, I don't find that I can work quickly in Logic to edit audio. You can do all of the same things you can do in Pro Tools. I just don't find it to be as quick or as um, intuitive as some of the other DAWs. Personal preference, that's totally me. I know some people are super quick at you know editing audio in Logic, but um, again, I just, I've never found it to be that painful, so it doesn't get a score of one, but I've never found it to be like super, super easy. Pro Tools, on the other hand, for editing audio gets a score of three because I think, again, Pro Tools was really designed to just crush at editing audio. They have a lot of features like, you know, tab to transient, which is really useful for drummers. I think Beat Detective is still the best way to edit drums. Um, I know that Logic has flex time and you can edit drums and grid drums like that. I still think Beat Detective is better. It's less CPU intensive um, in my experience. And also if you want to do like the flex time thing, you can do that in Pro Tools. I like editing audio and I think it's most intuitive and quickest in Pro Tools. And for editing audio for Ableton, I gave it a score of one because I, I just don't like editing in Ableton. Uh, and like I said, part of editing is being able to comp you know, with drums, have 16 channels grouped together, be able to comp stuff really quickly. Logic is okay at it. Pro Tools is amazing at it. I just think Ableton is, again, they're adding features to make that easier, but I think they're a little behind the curve in that specific area. Virtual instruments. This category is, you know, when you, you when you download the program, what stock virtual instruments does it come with and are they good? And I think Logic gets a score of three. I think Logic comes with amazing virtual instruments right when you download it. You don't gotta pay for anything. You don't gotta download extra libraries or whatever. The virtual instruments that come with Logic are great. For Pro Tools, I give it a one. Uh, Pro Tools does not come with super great uh, virtual instruments in my opinion. In the Air series, I, I do use their like piano and their, they have a sub synth one that is called something, whatever. They're okay. And honestly, for a lot of what I do, that's like fine. But if you're someone who's looking for flexibility, for looking for a ton of different sound options, you're really gonna be focused on like producing or arranging or composing with virtual instruments. Like Pro Tools is not, stock is not the option 
that's best for you. Logic is definitely better at it. And for Ableton, in the virtual instru instrument category, I gave it a score of two because it's better than Pro Tools, but not quite as good as Logic. I find that some of the virtual instruments it comes with are really cool. The way that they do it, you kind of got to like download packs and it's this whole thing. And I think a lot of their virtual instruments to me feel like they're catered toward a certain kind of musical genre, uh, which can be really cool because it, I think they natively have a little more like vibe and lean in that direction more. But um, I think Logic to me is just the, the better overall choice uh, for virtual instruments. MIDI editing. This would be how easy is it once you've recorded MIDI to manipulate the MIDI? And honestly, I gave every program a three. Everybody has said that Pro Tools for a long time is like terrible at working with MIDI. Like I, I don't believe that's true. Editing MIDI is very easy in all of these programs. It's like the one area where I don't have an opinion in any direction because I think all of them edit MIDI slightly differently, but to me, none of them are like better or worse than the other. And it's MIDI, like it's pretty easy to work with in the first place. So I, I, I think they all get a three. Stock plugins. How good are the stock plugins you get with each DAW? For Logic, I gave it a score of three. I think, again, Logic is really crushing it in the department of right when you download it, you just get a bunch of stuff where you don't feel like you need to go buy a bunch of virtual instruments or plugins or whatever. I think the stock plugins that come with Logic are great. Uh, they have a bunch of functional utility plugins, but they also have a bunch of like cool vibe color plugins that like you can kind of just get whatever you need done uh, done in Logic. For Pro Tools with the stock plugins, I gave it a score of two. Pro Tools plugins are great. There are certain plugins that I really wish I could buy by itself, Lo-Fi being one of them. Um, I think Lo-Fi is an amazing plugin. I would say that Pro Tools, is it doesn't get a three in this category because I think their plugins lean more toward a utilitarian thing. Um, a lot of them are very low CPU, which is great, but they're, the user interface of them isn't that pretty. It's not that sexy. And they just kind of like do the thing. And for Ableton, I gave it a score of three. I don't know. For stock plugins in Ableton, I think maybe on a, diff a different day, I would have given this a score of two. Ableton does have some really cool standalone plugins. Uh, the glue compressor is amazing. They don't have as many utility plugins as Pro Tools but they have more color plugins than Pro Tools. So to me, I don't know, this gets like a 2.5 to me. Next category, overall workflow. Now this is just kind of like, when I'm using these programs, how easy is it overall to just like do everything I want whenever I want? And this is a really subjective category. I mean, all these categories are subjective, but this one is really subjective. To me, I gave Logic a score of two in the category of overall workflow. I think for the most part, Logic's very easy to work in. It's very easy to get started in for sure. They have a lot of great plugins, so I don't have to like, you know, constantly be using third-party plugins to do stuff. Uh, the workflow is very, very simple, but I don't find I can work quite as fast as Pro Tools. I gave Pro Tools a score of three for the overall workflow because I just think Pro Tools, to me, again, I'm using almost exclusively audio all the time and Pro Tools is just built for that. So the workflow of it has been designed to do that. And then for Ableton, I gave it the overall workflow of one. I just don't do a lot in Ableton that I feel like it's like perfectly designed for that thing. One of the things I do, if this were a backing tracks video, I would give Ableton a score of 50 billion because I think Ableton is the perfect DAW for running backing tracks live. But uh, as far as recording, editing, mixing, all that stuff, I, I, I do not prefer to work in Ableton for that. Next category is mixing. How easy is it to mix a project in these DAWs? And for Logic, I gave it a score of two. I think uh, Logic is, again, it's like down the middle, it's very easy to use, but it's missing a couple things that I wish it had for mixing. Pro Tools, I gave this a three, because again, I think Pro Tools is kind of built to mix audio. It's still what most, most, not all. I hear you from the first video, I get it. There's a lot of people that use a lot of things, but most engineers and mastering it, like mix engineers and mastering engineers I work with still use Pro Tools to do it. I think Pro Tools, again, was designed for that. So I just think that like when it comes to mixing, Pro Tools is the best to me. And then for Ableton, I actually really do not like mixing in Ableton at all. Um, I don't like how limited you are on sins and buses and how that all works. I think the output when you're listening in Ableton is a little quieter 
Um, I, I just, I just, I, I have never been able to get a good mix in Ableton. And I'm not a mix engineer, so that's part of the reason. But um, I just, I don't think Ableton was specifically designed to be like super, super amazing at like mixing a bunch of audio. And that's just my opinion, but I like Pro Tools better. And the final category is collaboration. How easy is it to collaborate with others when using this software? And I think to me, there's two big things I consider with collaboration. One is how many people that I work with on a daily basis are using that exact DAW? Because that's gonna make it easier you know, if someone's working on some project and they're like, hey, I need drums on this. If we're using the same recording software, it's super easy for them to just send me a project file and I open it up. Sure, they can always send me stims and I can load them into whatever. But um, if they can send me a project file, that means it's gonna have the tempo already in there. It's gonna have the markers already in there. You know, they can give me splits of maybe the vocals are separate from the backing track, separate from the bass, so that I can have independent control of that. So that's the first thing I look at at collaboration. And the other thing is, um, can you use this software on any platform? PC, Mac, can you use these softwares on whatever? Because that's gonna open up how easy it is to, again, collaborate with other people. For Logic, I gave it a collaboration score of one. This is mainly because I just don't know a ton of producers and artists and mix engineers I work with personally that are using Logic to like mix and produce and whatever. And on top of that, Logic is only for Mac. To me, logic compatibility of one. Pro Tools gets a collaboration score of three, and this is personal to me, I get it, but almost every producer and engineer I work with use Pro Tools still, so Pro Tools is the DAW of choice for most of the people I work with, which means they can send me a Pro Tools session, I can send them a Pro Tools session. We don't always have to bounce out WAV files and then send it, and then I gotta load it up and find where zero is, and get the markers, and blah, blah, blah. They can just send me a project, I open it up, everything's laid out, I can just import whatever tracks I need, and I'm ready to go. Um, so it gets a collaboration score for that, and it also, you can use Pro Tools on PC or Mac, and I think, again, that's a big deal when it comes to working with not just your immediate circle, but people all over the world. For Ableton, it gets a score of two. It maybe should get a score of one based on how I rated Logic, but um, Ableton is able to be used on PC or Mac, which I think is makes it a little easier to collaborate, but no one that I work with on a regular basis produces or mixes in Ableton. So maybe it should get a collaboration score of one, but I, I wrote two, so I'm gonna go two, but you know, take it for what it's worth. Now that we have all those categories covered, who, what's the best DAW for me? So in order of highest score to lowest score, Pro Tools got a 24, Logic got a 23, and Ableton came in last place with an 18. And that to me kind of makes sense. There's a lot of times where, because I'm paying monthly for Avid, uh, I think I should just go to Logic. But Pro Tools is just a little more convenient for me that it, it does, and I do it professionally, so it does justify uh, me paying money every month for Pro Tools, for the ease of workflow it gives me and for the collaboration it gives me with other people. But I think for most people, honestly, Logic is probably the way that I would go. Again, all of these programs are great. All of them have just slightly different things that they are they excel at, that they were developed to kind of target. So those are the scores, but put below in the comments, like what DAW is right for you? What did you think? Like, where do you agree with me? Where do you disagree with me? If you enjoyed this, I'd love for you to leave a comment, leave a like, Hit subscribe, uh, it really helps the channel grow. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, put down in those comments what you thought and I'll see you in the next one.